what's the antonym of the number two? An antonym is sort of like the opposite or inverse or reverse of a word. Do numbers have those? And if so, could we call any of these the antonym of the number two? Well, when we're looking at inverses or opposites of concepts, whether we're talking mathematically like we will in a moment, or talking more philosophically, it quickly becomes quite interesting and perplexing. Like, what's the opposite of a match? Is the opposite of a match a lit fire? And what's the opposite of a fire then? Is it back to an uh, unlit match being the opposite of a fire? Or is the opposite of a fire something like water? Or perhaps not water, perhaps ice. That maybe even is more opposite-y. Or wait a minute, maybe ice is more like the opposite of water in some uh, trifecta of ice, water, and steam being some triangular opposite thing. Or wait a minute, maybe the opposite of ice is water and the opposite of water is fire, but that would mean the opposite of the opposite of ice isn't itself. Should the opposite of the opposite of something always be itself? Huh, or maybe the opposite of these things are something even more unrelated. Like maybe the opposite of something wet is just something dry. Or maybe the opposite of all of these is nothing. Maybe zero or absence or nothingness is the opposite of everything. What does it really mean to be an opposite? Perhaps when something feels like the opposite of another thing, like you might say a smiley face feels opposite to a frowny face, you're not actually switching every trait of the item to opposite, and you're actually saying that the two things are quite similar. Maybe saying two things are opposite means they are similar in many ways, with a few specific traits switched as if flipped across some axis like a mirror. Like if we said these two apples appear as opposites, well, we're not taking every trait of an apple opposite. If we did, we would be taking even the trait of it being a describable item opposite. We're not oppositing every trait of these apples, just the color is on the opposite side of a color wheel. And like fire and water are both elemental things and have many traits in common, with a few traits maybe feeling opposite. Perhaps opposite because when they're reflected across some weird axis, they cancel out in a way. Like, oh, okay, is that fire out? Oh, perhaps you could measure something's opposite by those two combining into some neutral state, like a happy face mixed with a sad face sort of balances out to a neutral face in a way. So maybe if we were trying to find the antonym of a number, we could try and see if that number somehow combined with another number to form something that was fundamentally neutral in some way. So let's say we're wondering if the number two has something else it can combine with that creates something neutral. Well, we're gonna have to mathematically define combine and neutral. Combine, perhaps, could mean some sort of mathematical operation, like addition or multiplication or other sorts of operation. But what does neutral mean? Well, in math, the type of neutral that we're talking about here is known as an identity element an identity element of a particular operation within a particular system is a number that under that operation would leave any other number unchanged or neutral. And there are two identity elements 
that you folks are already very familiar with, I'm sure. There is the additive identity, which would be a number that when we use addition in the real numbers, the system we're used to would leave any number the same. And as you know, if you add zero to any number, it stays the same. And that's why the additive identity is zero. So what about multiplication? If we multiply n by one, we'll always get the same thing because the multiplicative identity is one. A big part of why zero and one are such classic fundamental numbers is that zero is the number that doesn't change things under addition, and one is the number that doesn't change things under multiplication. Zero also has the trait of being what's known as an absorbing element under multiplication in the real numbers. Unlike an identity element, which turns any number into that same number, an absorbing element turns any number into the absorbing element. Like zero times anything turns that number into zero. Now with our identity elements, we noted that these might be created if you combined something with its opposite or inverse. So let's say we had a number x and added some potential opposite to it and got the additive identity, the number that wouldn't have changed things. And similarly, we could imagine, what if we had some number y and under multiplication, we multiplied it by some inverse that ended up giving us the multiplicative identity? Well, it turns out that these question marks are mathematically definable as reverses of these numbers under these operations in our system of the real numbers. This one, known as the additive inverse of a number, is more commonly called the opposite. So if we hear the opposite of two with no other clarifications, we would assume that that means the number negative two, because under addition, that combines with two to create the neutral additive identity. And under multiplication, this is more commonly known as an inverse. Technically, they're both inverses, an additive inverse and multiplicative inverse, but more commonly you'll hear this one nicknamed the opposite and this one nicknamed the inverse, if you don't hear any more details. So we could say the multiplicative inverse of two is one half, because when we multiply that by two, we end up getting the multiplicative identity. So when we asked what's the opposite or inverse of two, that was sort of two questions. But surely these two aren't the only possible answers to what the reverse of two is. These aren't the only possible operations. Like what if we tried to find the inverse of another type of operation that wasn't multiplication or addition? Now, if we were trying to calculate a sort of inverse or figure out how we would define that based on an identity element for one of the other most common operations you might encounter exponentiation we hit something a little trickier than with addition and multiplication you see with addition a plus b is always b plus a and with multiplication a times b is always b times a. But with exponentiation, a to the power of b is not always b to the power of a. Like, 
two to the power of three is eight, but three to the power of two is nine. Like in exponentiation, if we asked, is there an identity element B that doesn't change any A? Well, it depends if we're asking, is there any A to the B that's always A? Or any B to the A that's always A? This case, where any B would make A and some given operation to B equal that A, is known as B being a right identity. And in this case, when any B would make B and some operation to A equal that A, is known as a left identity. And in multiplication and addition, those are the same because multiplication and addition are commutative. It doesn't matter which order you put these things in, but in exponential differentiation, only a right identity exists. There is a number that works for this B here, the number one, where any number to the power of one equals that same number itself. But for a left identity, there isn't any number B that raised to any power equals the number we were going to the power of. So if we try to find the opposite or inverse of a number in an exponential way, there isn't one clear answer. There are two different paths we can take, one of which works better as an inverse due to actually having an identity element, leading us to the concept of logarithms. And the other path leading us a whole different way to roots of numbers, like square roots and cube roots, even apart from exponentiation. There are so many other operations we could consider. And notice how there's practically an endless amount of ways we could try to find the reverse of some number. Now the thing is, in the system of numbers we use, the real numbers, addition and multiplication are by far the most important operations. And with those, we can even define many of the most important numbers, particularly if we took a number line and just started with like the numbers zero and one, knowing that those are important as the additive identity and the multiplicative identity. And then we said that any two numbers add to another number in our system and any two numbers multiply to another number that's in our system technically known as addition and multiplication being closed in the real numbers. Well, we could say one plus one's two and add up to all of the future positive whole numbers. Now, if we wanted to introduce the negative numbers into our system, we could add a rule that said every number had an additive inverse. Then we would get negative one, negative two, and etc. And what if we said that every number also had a multiplicative inverse and we were keeping those rules where any two numbers in our system added or multiplied to a number that was still in our system? Well, after getting things like one half and being able to add those to other things in different combinations, we would get all of what are known as the rational numbers. Now, as for what it takes to get more than the rational numbers, all the in-between numbers on the number line, that, that may take a future episode. Although the reciprocal and negative are the two most fundamental types of reverses of a number that create this system of real numbers that we use in our life and within most of mathematics, there are possible other reverses. reverses of things that one could find. So mathematically, we can clarify particular types of reverses of numbers 
and say, oh, I'm going to that reverse or the other reverse. But if we say philosophically, what is the opposite of the opposite of something? It's like we're not being clear enough about all the possible mathematical operations we could be applying. If I said the opposite of the opposite of two without clarifying which sort of inverse I'm doing, maybe I was taking the multiplicative inverse of the additive inverse of two, which doesn't send me back to two, it sends me to negative one half. And so philosophically, there's a lot of different ways that we could imagine numbers uh, or cons. Okay, let's water this out. Things canceling each other out or being each other's opposites in different sorts of ways. All right, folks, thanks for joining me in... Oh, this is upside down. In combo... Oh, in combo class. And let's give a special thanks to all the people who helped make this show possible, like my Patreon supporters. And thanks to all of you for watching. I love you, and I'll catch you in the next episode. All right, Carla, grab that hose.